The point of the story is that oftentimes the way that you get to the result that you actually want is by doing the hard thing. Is by understanding that with every great thing you want to accomplish in life, it's going to be a challenge. The gift, the gift is overcoming the challenge. And so just like lead generation, you've got to have PPS, people, processes, and systems in place before you start generating a bunch of leads. You got to have people, processes, and systems in place in order to scale. Because in order to scale, you need to first be scalable. And scalable equals people, processes, and systems. It equals leverage, because leverage ultimately is the new hustle. <laughs>
for, first and foremost, if a, a, an agent and in, in, in somewhere in the country or one of my offices is, is listening to this or just thinking about going into the internet lead generation business, you know, what, what should their mindset be and what questions should they be asking themselves uh, following that outline that you just gave so that they know they're ready to do it. They know that they don't start spending money without things in place so that then they're left with, you know, sure. a bad taste of the entire opportunity. I see that and hear about it all the time. For sure, for sure. It's a couple of things. Number one is before, like th there is no lazy man's way to riches. So <laughs> anyone who's selling you, hey, you know, this new technology, this new system, this new that, this new this, this new that is going to be your lazy woman's way to, to riches and success and fortune. You should run away. And, and really, you need to be more astute than that as a business person. You need to understand. And in fact, you need to expect, you need to expect it to be hard. You need to expect there's a, there's a great story my dad told me when I was young that's around the, the obstacle is the way. And I'll share this really briefly. So there's a king who felt like his, his kingdom, the people in his kingdom, they were getting soft. They were getting kind of mushy and squishy on the inside. And he wanted to test this theory. So he took a big boulder and he put it outside of the kingdom, the one road that goes into and outside of the kingdom right? And so people were coming up with their goods and their services, and they were trying to get into the kingdom, but this boulder was stopping them. And you had a lot of people who turned around and they went the other way. A lot of people who sat there and complained, and a lot of people who just said, screw you, and they start cursing the king. And the king is sitting in the bushes watching this. And you had one man who walks up to the boulder, and he gets a stick, and he wedges the boulder out of the way, and it rolls off to the side. Mm -hmm. And when that boulder rolled off to the side, there was a small pouch beneath the boulder. And in that pouch was enough golden coins to make him wealthy. And on top of the golden coins, it had a little note. And it said, the obstacle is the way. The obstacle is the way. The more, and I used to ask my dad, what the hell are you talking about? Like no one wakes up in the morning <laughs> thinking, let me go find the hardest thing I can do and do that. That's not the point of the story. The point of the story is that oftentimes the way that you get to the result that you actually want is by doing the hard thing. It's by understanding that with every great thing you want to accomplish in life, it's going to be a challenge. The gift, the gift is overcoming the challenge. And so just like lead generation, you've got to have PPS, people processes and systems in place before you start generating a bunch of leads. You've got to have people processes and systems in place in order to scale, because in order to scale, you need to first be scalable. And scalable equals people processes and systems. It equals leverage, because leverage ultimately is the new hustle. That, that is very, that's a perfect intro to what we're gonna talk about. And, and, and one question I have about that is, is there, is there a common obstacle that you hear or see people encountering that either turn around and, and head away from the city as you just described, yeah. versus trying to move that stone out of the way? What, do you, what are you hearing, what are you seeing? And I know you run a, a large Facebook group as well that covers this topic. I think there's almost 10,000 people in there. Yeah, yeah. So. Um... The, the main thing is people don't have the time to consistently follow up with online leads. That's the, by far the number one way that people describe the problem that they have. I don't have the time to consistently follow up with online leads. The reality is your greatest resource as a business owner is, is your time, right? And your job is to understand how you should use your time. And the reality is if you are a if, you are, if you're trying to be a top producing agent, you probably should not be spending your time following up with new online leads, people you don't know anything about, cold calling new leads. That's a $8, $10 per hour job, 10% commission on the back end. That's a job for an inside sales agent. 
your job as a real estate sales professional is to help people buy homes. Those two things are two separate roles. They're two separate full-time jobs, right? So the first portion of this is to understand where you should spend your time. When we were young, Dave, our parents taught us how to, you know, um, what to do at home. Our pastor taught us what to do at church. Our teacher taught us what to do at school, right? You have your counselor who tells you what to do in different areas. Now as a business owner, no one's telling you what to do. You got to decide what you do with your time. And that's probably the biggest challenge that new age, the agents have, even top producers where they're kind of like, what should I focus on today? What should I do today? What should I invest my time, energy, and effort today? And so what we do at Smart Alto is we say, when you get a new online lead, you let us take care of the PPS, the people processes and systems so that we can help you get a ROI on your lead generation program and you go do what you do best. You let us do what we do best. We've got a job to do. That job comes with work and to do that work, we get paid. Let us do what we do and you go do what you do. So if I, if I wanted to do that, what, 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 would be, what would be the first step? I wanna, I wanna what, what part is gonna be on my responsibility on my end and what part falls on your side? First, you gotta be get, generating online leads. So you got to know where to get leads from. And you can obviously, like it's e nowadays it's easier than ever to get online leads, right? You've got Facebook, you've got Google PPC, you've got Instagram, you've got LinkedIn, which a lot of people are missing opportunities on. It's just such a, it's like a, LinkedIn is a blue ocean. And um, I, I believe, I believe our industry is just behind the curve of taking advantage of the opportunities that LinkedIn has, but LinkedIn is a blue ocean of just new online leads. So you've got to first have a consistent flow of online leads before someone engages us. And they need to be getting at least 30 to 50 per month, because if they're not getting that, then they don't have the problem that we solve, which is you don't have time to consistently follow up with leads. Because one of the things you should not be is broke and busy, right? You don't want to be broke <laughs> and busy. You need to be not one or the other. That's not a good recipe, no. right? If you're busy, you should be making money. So if you look at that, what you just said, so you're, you're talking about now the top of the funnel, the middle of the funnel, and the bottom of the funnel, and you talked about uh, social media using Facebook specifically. That's going to that's gonna be sort of a, that's going to be a top of the funnel lead. Yeah. Yeah, Google PPC would be mid funnel and then the bottom of the funnel would be something like realtor.com, Zillow, uh, Redfin. Yeah. And you're making me think of a, a comment that I got from an agent in a class that I taught less than two weeks ago. And that particular person uh, found out after the fact, like you started talking about with, with the quote that I, I pulled off your blog, which about the dumb tax is that agent had spent almost a thousand dollars before they realized the intention of the search of mm -hmm. the Facebook lead, right? So talk to me, talk to us about that intention as it relates to the three funnels. That is the number one word that I talk about and preach more than anything else because, because we can talk about different lead sources and places to get leads, but it really comes down to what you're trying to do is uncover intent. That's it. High intent, low intent, mediocre intent. You want to understand what's the person's intent. And you can get a high intent lead from Facebook and a low intent lead from Zillow. What the job is under, understanding what the person's intent is. And so the first job, the, the first goal of a new online lead is we get these new online leads, our inside sales agents, what we talk about is our first goal is not to set an appointment because we do that, right? Leads come in, we qualify and we schedule 15 minute phone appointments for agents across the US and Canada. But that's not our first goal is to set an appointment. Our first goal, our first job is to start a conversation with the person because through this conversation, we can understand what's their intent. And once you know their intent, you can put them in the right bucket, the right category. Now you can understand, do I need to follow up with this person later in eight months? Do I need to book an appointment so the agent can talk to them right now or within two days? 
do I need to put this person on a call list? Do I, what, what's my next step? But you only know that after you start a conversation with someone because the purpose of marketing, and this is important, the purpose of marketing is to move people through deeper phases of the customer relationship. And the way that we move people through deeper phases of the customer relationship in our business, because we're not Amazon, we're not e-commerce. The way you move people through deeper phases of the customer relationship is through conversation. The way you get people from, hey, you know, I'm interested in going to see a house to actually going to see the house that they want to see to buying it is through conversation. So without you want to start that conversation as early in the process as possible, humanize yourself as early in the process as possible, and figure out where you need to bucket them so that you can, what, understand how you should invest your time into these folks. Because not all leads are created equally, the same way not all doctors are created equally, and not all plumbers are created equally, and not all agents are created equally, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. So if I was hiring Smart Alto as an example, let's, let's, Let's get a little bit basic before we get too crazy. That that original foundation that I'm sure you would suggest every agent really needs to have in place before they just go out and turn on a faucet and generate or buy leads. We can do that, but but the conversion of it, uh, statistically, inside and outside real estate, it's about 80% of them don't get converted because the company or the business owner doesn't have the proper platform in place or the process in place. And you just mentioned lead segmenting where now once we have a conversation with them and figure out their intent, now I'm gonna segment them into different categories so that I can follow up. So my, my messaging meets their goal, right? And, and where they are in the process of, of obtaining that goal. So mm -hmm. if I wanted to start running ads, I'm David Cullen, I'm out here in Long Beach, California. I'm in the real estate sales business. I start running those ads, I'm generating the leads. At what point do I call you? And then what do I set up versus what you set up and how do we work together uh, in a business relationship? So we've got a process that we call our, there are three things that we do. And we've got this documented in Smart Alto because my, most valuable business asset is our operating system, our business operating system that basically details how Smart Alto works. How do we make customers happen? How do we deliver on our promise? And how do we innovate to win? We got those three things documented. What we're talking about now is how do we, in, how do we um, deliver on our promise? So when someone comes to us and they say, hey, they want to start up. They want to start with Smart Alto. We put them through our white glove service onboarding. And this is really important because there's a couple of things that happens. First, every Tuesday and Thursday, I teach a fast start class. And that fast start class is all about how to maximize success with Smart Alto, right? So it's required that all our new customers absolutely take that fast start class. If you've got a Smart Alto account, you've got to go through that fast start class. It's not optional, it's mandatory. And the reason we do that is not because I'm a jerk, but because we want to work with people who have success potential. And the way we manage expectations and sh show people what that success potential looks like is within that fast start class, because people are going to be more successful when they know what they just bought and how it works, <laughs> right? So right, right, this, right. this is like, as much as you don't want to, you know, like kind of read the training manual, yep. this is the training manual and it, it explains how we work and how we're going to help you get a return on investment on your um, lead generation program, because that's the, that's the real goal. We all talk about lead conversion and what percent of people are going to turn into appointments and et cetera. But the real goal is if you're not getting the ROI on your lead conversion program, Nothing else matters. You're going to leave. That's right. right. Yeah. Right. You need to make and you're going to be frustrated and you're going to have a bad, a bad taste about yeah. the opportunity. And, and, but at the same time, there's going to be that FOMO because the, the opportunity is massive and the internet and social media, it's not going away. It's never going to go away. It's, it's where all of us are, are spending all of our attention is on our phone, on one of those platforms. Yeah. And, and, and people aren't calling a realtor when they're at, at the early stages of buying or selling real estate. It's just not the way it happens, right? They're not, they're not. The part of the value that we give to people is that we, 
and listen, I don't, you know this, Dave, but the National Association of Realtors each year, they put out uh, NAR buyer and seller profile report. I buy that report every year. This year, I didn't buy it because the National Association of Realtors invested in my company through a strategic financing arm called um, Second Century Ventures and Reach. But so they gave me that report. But every year I buy the report. I was going to get the report every year. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because I want to understand what are some of the brightest minds saying about what's happening in the industry. And over 73% of buyers work with the very first agent they meet when they're ready to transact, meaning that they don't shop around. So if you can get to that appointment first, if you can talk to that person first, you've got a seven out of 10 chance of turning that into a transaction, which across the US is about $9,000 commission check. Now it's much more, it's, it's more in your area, right? You're in LA, right? That's, right. That's okay. <laughs> We're okay with that. <laughs> um, but, but so there's a lot of value then in setting that first appointment. And the number is even greater for sellers. It's like over 80%. They don't shop around. And so if you can get there first, you can get there first. This is the quintessential, the early bird gets the worm. And I believe that to be true because most agents are really good in person. They have the emotional intelligence no, right. to connect with people, right? If I can connect with you, if I can just get on the phone, if I can just get in person, I can win the business. The question is, what's the best way to do that? That's the problem that we saw. I got you. No, it makes perfect sense. And it's, a, and it's a great help for people. And the other thing is, is you're, you're really providing a lot of confidence as well, because if, if I'm left to my own devices and I don't know all of the things that you and your company know, I, I'm very, very often I'm going to do nothing. Yeah. I'm not going to move forward. Now, you've given a lot of people the opportunity to move forward with confidence because it's now a partnership. They can come in and, and not pay the dumb tax. Right. Yeah. That's why they need to, that's why they need to go to that first class. So yeah. now, now once well, let's talk a little bit about, about uh, five categories that, that you have mentioned before, and you've got one is done for you leads. Two is boutique agency. Three is commission split and referral sources. Four is self-serve advertising portals. Five is CRMs with the ability to uh, lead generate. Mm -hmm. Um do you want to talk a little bit about those, and then and then let's talk a little, take a little deeper dive into the the strategies so that people can get the highest conversion rate possible. And that's, I know that's a very lengthy conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a couple of things. The first one is just done for you leads, right? And so when you think about this, and by the way, these different categories are the way that we kind of think about them internally. It's our internal nomenclature, and so we. We spent a lot of time, energy, and effort of going out finding not all the lead sources, but some of the best ones that we found out there, right? And so when, when you're thinking about kind of scaling, expanding your business, how do you need to think about lead generation as it relates to your time, um, the amount of energy you want to invest, the amount of money that you have, and the amount of control that you want. And so, so we took those like different criteria and we bucketed them into these five. So the first one is just done, done for you leads. And that's what it sounds like, right? So someone else is doing it for you. This is someone who's- That's the one I like the most. <laughs> you like, because you don't have to do anything. That's like, it. I'm going to do- Keep me in my lane. It's exactly what you said before. When, yeah. when I got a real estate license, I didn't get a real estate license because I was going to become a lead nurturer with people that had no idea who I was and vice versa. And, and that's not, that, that was not on my mind. I don't know that that's on the mind of, of too many other folks as well. What we like is we like the person who walks into the open house with a bag of cash with an immediate need. They want <laughs> to buy the car because they've got to have their kids in school in a certain school in a certain neighborhood by a certain time, right? Yeah. That, that's what we are looking for. And what we lose is the opportunity of, of the people that become those people, but they're just not there yet. It's gonna take, it's gonna take 10, 11, 12 months before that happens. So, so you're, 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 filling that, you're filling that gap for, for people in terms of skill set, best practices, 
uh, the, the time management side of it and creating leverage for people like me that want the want the person with the bag of cash, right? Exactly. They'll show up down the road. So, um, but we'll fill us in a little bit on that. Let, 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 let's let's have you uh, talk us through some of that so that the that the audience gets to walk away with some clear clearly written notes with some things that they can execute immediately on and start seeing some results. So, okay. Go ahead. So with regards to lead follow-up, there's a couple of things that I think about here. All right, so one is your very, and I've mentioned this, your very first goal is to start a conversation with the lead. That's the first goal. And what, we, what we've shown time and time again through best practices, through data, through ultimately results is that the best way to start the conversation with the new lead is first to text them. That does not mean phone calls and emails are dead and people should never do them. But what it does mean is that today people don't answer the phone the way they used to. Mm -hmm. That's just the reality. Everyone knows that. Now, you've got to, you've got to respond with a personalized message within two to three minutes. And you've got to do that 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, if you want to get a response from this person, if you want to start a conversation with them because leads come in all the time. So you want to text them, but, and there's this kind of counterpoint to it. You can't text them too fast. And the reason is because you need to optimize. This is a really important thing. You need to optimize for being human. You need to let them know that you're actually a human on the other end who's having this conversation with them. And so we've got four magic words that we use and we put in all of our text messages, four magic words. All right, I'm, I'm getting my notes. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> yes, a real person. So our first message that we'll send to folks, hi, hi, Dave. This is Alex, parentheses, yes, a real person, in parentheses. The real estate coordinator for Jake. I see that you were looking at homes for sale on my website a while back. Just curious, how many bedrooms are you looking for? So I just gave you two really important nuggets, well, several, but I'm gonna focus on two. Two okay. really important nuggets. The first one is, you need to optimize for being human. People want to talk to people, not robots. And if when you tell people that you are a real human, you will get a 15% increase or bump in your response rate. We've proven that time and time and time and time again. When you show people, when you optimize for being human, you're going to get more people to respond to you. What's the goal? To start a conversation. So when you talk to more people, you make more money. The second thing is, if the very first goal is to start a conversation, the first question that you ask becomes important. There are a lot of bad first questions that I've seen. I've seen agents use, What's, um, what do you want in a dream home? What features most excite you in a dream home? Can you come in for a buyer's consultation? Those are all bad first questions. I'm not saying they're bad questions, and I'm not saying those are not questions that maybe one day you want to know the answer to. But asking someone, do they have a pre-qualification letter in hand, is their very first thing that you mentioned to them is a bad idea. Your goal is to start a conversation, so you need to have a litmus test for understanding what question that you ask people. Here's the litmus test I use. Can grandma respond to your question at two o'clock in the morning while scrolling through Facebook and watching Judge Judy on her iPhone? Because if grandma can't respond to you, then it's a bad first question because your first question is too hard. And you don't need people to think about your first question. You simply need them to respond to it. You need them to know the answer so well they respond to it which is why I phrased the question, how many bedrooms are you looking for? 
How many buttons do they have to press to respond to me? Two. That's it. The number of bedrooms they're looking for and send. Three and send. Two and send. Five and send. That's it. You also mentioned something else. I'm just curious how important it is because it is, um, you know, I, I'll, I also was a, a recruiter to grow real estate brokerages yeah. for over a decade. And, and oftentimes I would call people. I'd come into a new city. I didn't never live there. No one knew who I was and vice versa. And sometimes people would say, how did you get my contact information? And, and, and I noticed that you started off by telling the consumer via text that I noticed you were on my website and you were looking for this. So you, you, you sort of took that part off the table. Is that, is that, how important is that? That's really important because if not, then people are going to be wondering. Think about, think about the, the, what's happening from the user's perspective, the lead, right? Mm -hmm. So they're online clicking stuff. And then a couple of minutes later, they get a text message from you, right? Right. Well, they may or may not remember what it is they clicked, where they were, et cetera, especially, and that's definitely true if you're doing this to leads who are three, five, six months old, eight, 10, 12 months old. If you're following up with leads, you gotta answer the unasked question that everyone is wondering, how you get my stuff? So just go yeah. ahead and tell them and move on. And that little small sentence right there does wonders. We've yeah. tested that message quite a bit. Well, I think it's interesting because you, you said that your goal is to get them to answer in, 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 a, in the least amount of confusion or thought process or creating delays is going to screw that up. So you've taken a lot of that off the table. As simple as it sounds, it's very well thought out. Mm -hmm. What's what's next? So so uh, is or is there another uh, is there another question that you get a lot of success success with so that agents that are listening can can have several options or have you found that just one works the best and and then what is what about the scenario in which the lead came is there what what what, what are some more a deeper dive in that side of the equation yeah so we've tested dozens and dozens and dozens of variations of the very first question everything from hi is this dave to what area are you looking in to you name it, we've likely tested it. The clear winner is how many bedrooms are you looking for? Got it. The, the very <laughs> clear winner. So, and I'm not saying other things don't work and other things you won't get a response from, but the very clear winner. And people get people try to get creative with this and they are screwed up every single time because it, the question doesn't pass the litmus test. And it took me a long time to understand that to even come up with that litmus test that we use internally, because we used to use, you know, what area are you interested in? And the problem with that is there are a lot of areas where someone could be interested in, in moving to, mm -hmm. right? It could be this neighborhood, or it could be that area, or it could be within three miles of this school district, right? It's a lot of ways to describe the area. You know what I mean? And I love your litmus test again, that grandma's not gonna answer that question while she's watching Judge, Judge Judy and doing something else over here. It has to be simpler than that. It has to be. Now simpler. let's talk about let's talk about time frames, and then let's talk about what happens when you send that first message and you get no response. What's the what's the strategy moving forward from there? Do I uh, when do I give up? What, when do I not give up? Where do I place them in my segmented lead follow up buckets, etc.? What's walk me through that. So the very next thing is let's take the person who does respond. Okay. You qualify people using a process called the banter principle. The banter principle. And I've got this as a blog on my website. Let me see if I can find it and just put it in the notes right quick. Let me see. Banter. I'll grab this and put it here. Uh, so... Oh, and maybe I'll take this other one too, because you were mentioning this lead sources one. Yeah, 55 lead sources. Yeah, I'll put that in there too. I'll just grab it and put it in there. So I don't know where, I don't even know where that goes, where I just put, I just put that in, in the Zoom, but maybe Jake is gonna have to take that and post it in, in the Facebook group maybe, but anyway. People will like it because you did a really good job of, of not only creating the list of the sources but you also have dollar signs next to each one kind of like if i'm going to a restaurant how much money do i want to spend that kind of thing i thought that's cool it's very well done 
for sure. Thank you. Thank you. So you want to use the banter principle and banter, B-A-N-T-A-R, B-A-N-T-A-R, B-A-N-T-A-R. The B stands for budget. You want to understand what's their budget, 300,000, 3 million, maybe in your area, 30 million. Who are we <laughs> talking to here, right? It helps you prioritize that person in your mind. The mm. A stands for authority, authority. Is this person an authority figure? Can they actually make a buying or selling decision? Or is it mom and dad who's looking for their 23-year-old son who doesn't have, have a job and is looking to rent and you don't deal with renters? We don't want to put you on the phone with someone you can't help and you can't help that person. We don't want to put you on the phone with someone who can't make a decision, right? So mm -hmm. you got to understand the authority. The N stands for needs, wants, and expectations. Correct. What are their needs, wants, and expectations? Three bedroom, two bath, five bedroom, seven bath. Do they need a house with a big backyard and a great school district? What do they expect from the transaction? Okay. The T stands for timeline, three days, three months, three years. We can all agree that you follow up with someone differently who's looking to buy in three days than you do three months, than you do three years. So it's important to know that. The A stands for area, area. What area are they interested in? Is this an area that you work? Is it an area that you, that you live in? Is it an area that you um, are an expert in where you can actually help that person? Or is it, you know, if you live in LA, maybe you work in the North side, they want to buy on the south side and it's going to take you an hour and a half to get there outside your area. So mm -hmm. you disqualify those people. And then the R stands for relationship. What's their relationship with a lender? What's their relationship with an agent? If they don't have a relationship with a lender, they haven't been pre-approved. If they already have a relationship with an agent, a signed buyer's agreement, then you can't help them anyway. And I saw a question on there from someone. They were asking what the B is. So I'm just backing up and I'm saying that was the budget. Yes, okay. budget. B is for budget. And it's important to understand, you never want to ask someone what's their budget in that way. Because people don't respond to it nearly as frequently as they do when you ask them, what price range of homes are you interested in? So you can't just, you, you need to understand you need to have the emotional intelligence to understand the way to ask some of these questions and not just saying, hey, what's your budget? And the only way that I know that is because I paid the dumb tax and I've done things that, man, why are people not responding to this? There's no great way to, to use the word budget in a text message or ask people what their budget is. No great way to do that. But what price range are you interested in comes across a lot softer and more people respond to it, which is ultimately what I care about. Now, is that, uh, are those questions in that link that you put up there? And do you have a specific question for each one of the letters in your acronym? I do, I do. So, and they are in that link because if you click that link, um, the banter principle link, if you go there, there's a download, you can download everything from there and there's a little handout that comes along with the PDF. Okay. And I was, I was asking specifically, too, because I noticed we have two minutes left. So uh, my fear is always that there are lots of people that won't actually click on the link and do it. And yeah. then I thought, well, what, do we have time to go through and explore them? I don't think we're going to have time to go through each one of those. So with the two minutes that we have remaining, um, the thing that uh, maybe we should talk about is, Eric, just from your perspective, what advice, what kind of challenges are you seeing? You know, and it's probably going to get broken down into how do you move people off the fence and pulling the trigger to start to add this bucket of internet lead generation to their business model? And or if they have done that already, how could they maximize their success? What, it, what are some tips for, for doing so? Because you, you see it all. You've got a broad view. Maybe answer those two questions and then we'll wrap up and to be continued. Cool. So the, let's start with the second one first. If you're already doing this, then the question becomes, how can you have a, how can you get PPS as fast as possible? People, processes, and systems. How can you plug and play into that? Because people, processes, and systems ultimately helps you scale. Because before you scale, you need to be scalable. And so PPS, people, processes and systems. And so if you don't have, if for example, if you've got an ISA, but you don't have 
PPS, people, processes, and systems, then you ain't got a scalable model. What you've got is an ISA. <laughs> So you've got some frustration coming up, coming your way real soon. Yeah. You just may not real know soon. that. <laughs> real soon. So you got to have this stuff documented. You've got to have ultimately what we've got at Smart Alto, which is how do we deliver on the promise? You've got to have all that stuff ironed out, fine-tuned. If you haven't started doing any of this stuff yet and you're thinking, where do I start? Well, if you're not generating online leads, then I'm questioning where's your business coming from? Right. So if you're already starting to generate online leads and you're trying to follow up with them yourself, you got to ask yourself the question, is this where my time is best spent as a business owner? And if it's not, then you need to make a choice. You need to make a decision and you need to have an ink mindset. Right. You need to start running your business like a business and stop focusing so much as an operator in the business and start focusing as an owner. And when you do that, you can start scaling and have greater success. Well, I got to tell you, I love the way your brain works. I can tell you're a deep thinker. I love, and I love what you said when we first started talking. And and you can really, you can really hear it when you when you mentioned the process of you writing things down and having time to think and the specific questions you ask yourself. You, you clearly, you've been doing that a long time because the the practice and the effort you put forth certainly uh, shows up in your your speech, your language, your mindset, your delivery. How do people, how do people, last thing, how do people connect with you? So they can go to smartalto.com, reach out, and um, they would like to book a demo. They can go there and book a demo. If not, then I'll put my email address in here. I'll sign at smartalto.com. And folks can shoot me a message there. And um, I'm a pretty easy person to get in touch with. So, you know what? It's been a pleasure to connect with you. I thank you so much for your time. any last words? Last words. One thing I'll say is that oftentimes I see, I see folks do a great job at taking their listing and getting buyers. What I don't see people doing a great job at is taking their buyers and finding listings. And there's a fantastic opportunity to do that. And the next time I come on and talk, I'm going to share with you the way to do it that has totally transformed some of my customers' business. So I look forward to, ch- to coming back and talking about that. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Peace. Be well. You too.